I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Hashtag aliens exist takes over Twitter after the US Pentagon admit they cannot explain what these little flying things are. Students demand a refund as they're not in class due to the lockdown. We speak to the developer of the Bcomshu app, an app which lets people in Turkey pay their neighbors' bills. And it is 75 years of Thomas the Tank Engine. And top of our news feed, unidentified aerial phenomena. That's how the US military is describing the objects filmed by some of their pilots in the past 20 years. Now, these clips, which surfaced online in about 2017, have been verified as real. The things they recorded did not adhere to the laws of physics as we understand them, so it's leaving many to ask the question more valid now than perhaps ever. Are these alien aircraft? Watch this. <laughs> We're going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's rotating. After a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorised release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems and does not impinge on any subsequent investigations of military airspace incursions by unidentified aerial phenomena. with a story as incredible as this. The internet has been quick to have its jokes with it. Hashtag aliens exist has been a top trend all day. Now this one plays on the fact that the symptoms, Simpsons have been very prescient about things like this. This one says that if aliens come during the lockdown, we'll have to tell them Earth is closed, a la Tony Stark from the Avengers movie. And this one lists the stuff which has happened this year. January was World War III because of the killing of an Iranian general by the US. February was coronavirus, March was social distancing, April is aliens exist, so what will be coming in May? Watch this space. Okay, around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. A record number of people were internally displaced in 2019, 50 million people. Research from the Norwegian Refugee Council says the pandemic will likely make the number higher next year. 5 million were displaced by natural disasters, 45 million were displaced by war and violence. And the world increased spending on guns and bombs and other things to kill other people with in 2019. The biggest spender on lethal tools was the US. Uh, governments around the globe spent $1.9 trillion on weapons. For some context, at least 7.8 million was spent on healthcare. And this is the trailer for the latest bit of marketing for the Obamas. It's for Michelle Obama's uh, documentary on her book called Becoming and is about her book tour to promote the book and get people to buy it. Now there are growing up calls from students all over the world to have their tuition either cancelled or refunded because they can't attend class because of the lockdown. Faisal has the story. People all over the world are calling for their student loans to be cancelled 
student debt had been growing before the coronavirus pandemic and now many find themselves with less or no income and are unable to pay. In the United States alone, total student loan debt is a massive $1.6 trillion with nearly 45 million borrowers. It takes on average 20 years to pay off student loans there. Since the government began issuing coronavirus relief checks, many graduates have used them for their student loans. For me, it felt um, it felt good. It feels like a cushion, um, something extra because I am still working right now. So it definitely eases any um, stress that I was feeling about potentially getting laid off. In the UK, a survey found that 85% of working students would need financial support because they have lost their jobs. An online petition is calling for reimbursement of this year's fees. It's received over 330,000 signatures, but the government has shown no interest in carrying out the request. The Dutch government, meanwhile, says it will not submit any collection requests during the crisis. Relief for students has not been a priority for most governments as they respond to the pandemic, but it remains a big problem. Classes all over the world may have gone online, but the debt those students have been raking up remains firmly planted and growing in the real world. Well, here in Turkey, a new app has launched called Be Komşu. It means one neighbor and it allows people to pay the bills of a stranger who is struggling to make ends meet due to the COVID-19 lockdown. I spoke to one of the app's developers, Ezgi. <laughs> After this pandemic started, uh, we, uh, we thought, how can we help the people in need? We saw that uh, there are some delays, postponements about rent. There were some gaps about uh, bills payment. And um, we thought we can do something about uh, the house bills. And uh, that's how uh, we created uh, becomsu.com. It's a platform uh, for people who like to, who wants to help. It's also for the people who need uh, some aid about uh, payment of the bills. It's just a meeting point, actually. The numbers are very um, hopeful and it's just have been uh, two weeks uh, right now and I see that 7 uh, million and uh, 700,000 Turkish liras are waiting to be paid. 600,000 uh, Turkish liras uh, of bills uh, are paid right now and, and that means uh, nearly 4,000 people, uh, nearly 4,000 families are happier now. Very emotional, actually. Uh, we got lots of uh, prayers. We got lots of beautiful messages from all around the country. And uh, we also got messages from our supporters. It's just been very um, happy times for us. In this uh, solidarity environment, we, we can have uh, some help from the people who are watching right now. And uh, one of them is uh, just clicking on the website. It's uh, bikomsu.com. It means uh, neighborhood and helping your neighbor. And you just uh, click on the website and put your information on the website. You see uh, lots of bills to be paid. We are trying to um, bring forward the urgent ones. Click on the um, bills and you see the information about the bill. And it's just uh, what you need. And then you can uh, pay the bill uh, however uh, you want. And that's one way to help. And the other way is uh, sharing this uh, movement on social media. Uh, social media is a very important tool for us. It's uh, how we uh, got bigger and bigger, and it's how we get to the people in need. It's just not a solution just for today. It's also a solution uh, for our future problems because lots of people see that the coronavirus crisis is just not for today's problem. It's also, it has effects uh, in the future.
a very good cause. Donate if you can. Let's take a look at some other COVID-19 related stories you need to know. Well, pets need to be treated like any other member of society, and that means social distancing. This comes from the US Centers for Disease Control, who recorded the first case of COVID-19 in two cats in New York last week. The research on whether pets can transmit the disease is still being carried out. And people in the United States are going out more than usual right now. It's being called lockdown fatigue. The research from the University of Maryland found most people initially respected being told to stay indoors to stop the spread of disease, but from the 14th of April began hanging out again. This was found in all but three U.S. states. The U.S., led by Donald Trump, is keen to reopen the economy, often against the advice of scientists. And Sydney, Australia has reopened Bondi Beach. It's been closed for five weeks. The beach itself is still closed to sun seekers, but swimmers and surfers are allowed back in the water. And YouTube will host a major combined film festival on the 29th of May. It's called We Are One, a global film festival, and will be 10 days of the globe's major movie events of the year with screenings and talks that would normally be reserved for those who can get tickets to Cannes or Sundance or Tribeca. This is not designed as a replacement for those actual events. They're still planned, just not at their normal times or with their normal attendance. It aims to raise money for the World Health Organization. Viewers are expected to donate. Well, now for a look at how a scholar born in the 10th century has had a major influence on the way we find ourselves living today. Quarantine this, quarantine that. Since the start of the COVID-19 outbreak, online searches of the word quarantine have increased by 10,000%. Whether it's health experts, politicians, or the media, quarantine has been the number one recommendation as the most effective way of curbing the infection rate of coronavirus and limit its detrimental impact globally. But is quarantine a new phenomena? And do you know who came up with it? If you look up the definition of quarantine, this is what you'll find. A state, period, or place of isolation in which people or animals that have arrived from elsewhere or been exposed to infectious or contagious disease are placed. Now, the concept of quarantine has been used since biblical times, but there is a general consensus that the man who ingrained and popularized the term is Muslim polymath Ibn Sina, also referred to as Avicenna. Ibn Sina is regarded as one of the most significant physicians, astronomers, thinkers, and writers of the Islamic Golden Age. He argued for the use of quarantine to control the spread of diseases in his five-volume medical encyclopedia, The Canon of Medicine, originally published in 1025. The Muslim scholar had explained his theory that diseases spread through small particles invisible to the naked eye, a discovery that was proven centuries later after the invention of microscopes. So as you can see, Ibn Sina was clearly a visionary way beyond his time. He came up with the concept of al arbaniya which translated from Arabic means 40 days an isolation method to stop the spread of diseases. In the mid-1300s, when the Black Death ravaged the world, all crew docking in Venice needed to stay on board for 40 days in quarantine before coming on land. The Venetians called it Quarantina, and that's how we get the word quarantine. Ibn Sina's influence resonated in both the Eastern and Western worlds. His book Canon of Medicine was translated into Latin in Spain in the 12th century. And in Italy, the University of Bologna, the oldest European university, was the first to adopt his works as the base of its medical education in the 13th century. And so, from the 13th century to the 17th centuries, Ibn Sina's encyclopedia became the foundation of Western medical education programs. Fast forward to 2020, and now humanity at large faces the unprecedented threat of COVID-19. And we find ourselves once again taking a page from Ibn Sina's book. And last up, as an excuse to see some of my program editor Louis and my favourite childhood cartoon, here is Harry Windsor reading from a book. It all began when a young boy lay ill in bed. His loving father entertained him with stories of a special railway. Well, as you may or may not know, it is Thomas the Tank Engine's 75th birthday. The little blue train was created by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey in 1945. He and his mates Toby and Edward and the Fat Controller and all the rest filled books and TV shows with their adventures on the island of Sodor. The show was narrated by the Beatles drummer Ringo Starr and was a very treasured part of mine, Louis, and millions of other childhoods. So happy birthday to Thomas the Tank. And that'll do you from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. See you tomorrow.